Check us out on Patreon, guys, where we give you our exclusive access to all of our videos, 186 videos and counting. We just updated it. That's why I know how much, how many videos is on there. Bangers, too, though. <laughs> Bangers. You know, nothing too shabby. I mean, I don't know, like a Led Zeppelin marathon. We got Metallica mm -hmm. on there, some yep. Mega F stuff. You know, I'm just saying. Just throwing that out there, man. So if you're interested, definitely check that out, guys. The link for that will be in the uh, description. What's up, guys? Your boys are back. I'm Ryan, my man, George. Yeah, back to suicidal tendencies, man. Shout out to everybody. Hope y'all doing okay. Yeah, man. We did How Will I Laugh tomorrow, and that was uh, about four years ago. Yeah, that was actually a dedicational type of video to one of our subscribers. I think he had uh, a lost in a, in a family. One of his uh, family members died. So yeah. that's what made us do that song the first time. So we're getting back to him. Getting back to him. And we've done, I think, someone, I think the lead singer of this group, if I'm not mistaken, had another group. Infectious Grooves, Mike Mike Muir, if I'm not mistaken, and we did Violent and Funky from them. But uh, this is the the this will be the second song, obviously, that we're mm -hmm. doing from Suicidal Tendencies, and we got this song specifically off of the 1980s poll. Had 476 votes on it, so it was a pretty substantial amount of votes. And how uh, many for songs? How many band members have been? on Suicidal Tendencies, like, roster. It's I, been, like, a, a shitload. Yeah, it's a, a shitload. But one of them, our, our man from uh, Slayer, right? Dave Lombardo? Yeah, Dave Lombardo, man. I don't know why I forget about him sometimes, but he might be one of my favorite drummers. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. Like, Dave Lombardo is no joke from Slayer. Robert, Robert Trujillo, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Trujillo, I believe, um, from Metallica, the bassist now, the current mm -hmm. bassist from yeah, um, Metallica, so. And there's a lot of people that, that has been, that they've rotated in, in past band members. I'm looking on uh, Wikipedia. There is a ton. I can't even, how many of you think that is? Yeah, it's a lot. You know, that was one of the things that I think was mentioned in the yeah. comments was that this was a band that had a lot of um, members that went on to do some great things in metal. You know what I mean? So this is, uh, this came out in 1983 and I believe this is the lead single off of their uh, debut album, Suicide, Suicidal Tendencies. So mm -hmm. let's get to it, man. Institutionalize. I know about that. You know what I'm saying? I know, <laughs> I know what that means, you know? So it'd be interesting to, uh, to hear their perspective on it. Let's get to it. Suicidal tendencies institutionalized. Sometimes I try to do things and it just doesn't work out the way I want it to. And I get real frustrated. They're like, I try hard to do it and I like take my time, but it just doesn't work out the way I want it to. It's like I concentrate on real hard, but it just doesn't work out. And everything I do and everything I try, it never turns out. It's like I need time to figure these things out. There's always someone there going, hey Mike, you know, we've been noticing you've been having a lot of problems lately, you know? You maybe get away. And like, maybe you should talk about it, you'll feel a lot better. And I go, no, it's okay, you know? I'll figure it out. Just leave me alone, I'll figure it out, you know? I'm just working on myself. And they go, well, you know, if you want to talk about it, I'll be here, you know? And you'll probably feel a lot better if you talk about it. So why don't you talk about it? I go, no, I don't want to, I'm okay. This is like him on a crazy rant right now. Like, um, Someone just um, shit all over his day. You know what I'm saying? Shitting the cereal? <laughs> and he is just like, he is fed up to the brim of the bullshit. The fuckery, as George like to call it. <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm done with all this shit. You know, I try try to do things the right way. I try and things never work out. And I try so hard, it never works out. And then people always ask me if I need help, you should probably talk about it. And I don't want to talk about it. It's just like... It, it, this is like the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. That's that where that saying <laughs> comes from. It sounds like this motherfucker is just fed up. Like I'm just fed up with the bullshit, and I'm gonna use this song as an opportunity to talk my shit. That's what it sounds like to me. He's talking. You know what I'm saying? I thought that this was the intro. I'm I bullshit you not, and Ryan just kind of destroyed my uh, my hope here. And he said it was. And I need this to is verse. Like, He's like, nah, that's the verse. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought it was just talking, and then he was gonna get into. You know, singing or something like that at a certain point. So this is the this is what we can expect for the entire song. I, I'm, I, is this what we're going to be expecting here? This sort of talking, rambling. Maybe. Okay. And who voted for this? Can we look into specifically uh, every single specific person that voted for this song? No, no, we can't. <laughs> Let's get back to it, man. I'm gonna try to get into the lyrics and see what they're trying to do here with with the whole idea of uh, it being institutionalized. Let's get back to it. You feel a lot better. I go, no, it's okay, you know. I'll figure it out. Just leave me alone. I'll figure it out, you know. I'm just working on myself. They go, well, you know, if you want to talk about it, I'll be here, you know. And you'll probably feel a lot better if you talk about it. So why don't you talk about it? I go, no, I don't want to. I'm okay. I'll figure it out myself. And they just keep bugging me. They just keep bugging me. There's pills on the side. It's got me and two sides. So come and pray with one side. You will not have any say. I pray with you. Oh, wow. I'm not drinking. Here's the design. You're the one that's drinking. Here's the design. You're 
mom came in right because i swear to you man when he when he first started talking i was like this sounds like a troubled Kid. teenager yeah you know what i'm saying like that's just this trouble that just needs <laughs> some type of sort of uh some help some therapy is what it sounds like well for me george man i'm trying to process it man and i'm trying to really look at it uh objectively because if i'm just going off pure emotion no i don't like the way it sounds but i'm trying to um you know kind of like rationalize it and uh i think you hit it right on the head when you said that it sounded like an adolescent teen that is um just going through it you know that's what it sounds like to me so that i'm sure that that's probably the um the idea and like the motivation behind it and i noticed when the when the, fir the first verse the first verse of him talking and ranting was ending the pace in which the song sped up which kind of got into that punk vibe right mm -hmm. So it sounds like something is mounting and maybe in his mind he feels institutionalized by the constructs of the bullshit of everyday life, you know? Um, maybe that that's what that is. I feel like the song mimics his frustration and um, his irritation. I feel like that that's what this is for because it sounds irritating to me. It, 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 you know, yeah, when I'm accomplished. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like that that was the goal here because I'm like, first of all, stop yelling. Second of all, turn the music down. And third of all, let's have a conversation. This sounds like someone is arguing with loud ass music in the back. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like to me. So if I was talking to an adolescent, I would be like, number one, check your tone, meaning bring your tone down. Number two, turn that loud ass music down so I can understand what the fuck you're saying. And then Third, let's have a, an, um, a conversation without yelling. Let's have a, a, a mutual verbal conversation that we can kind of get to the crux or the root of the issue that you're having. That's what this song sounds like to me. So I think that that's why it's uh, got these elements of, of him ranting and the, um, the loud music. Because it sounds like nails on a chalkboard to me. It sounds very irritating and i feel like that that is the point of the song i really do he said i'm not crazy you're the one that's crazy you're driving me crazy they stick me in an institution and said it was the only solution to give me the needed professional help to protect me from the enemy myself right so um and the song is titled institutionalized and then the band's name is suicidal tendencies right i would think this band spoke to a generation you know based off of um their approach on this i just think that they spoke to to a specific generation and maybe even within that generation a niche uh, of people man who are struggling with with mental health you know what i mean and um this is maybe taking you inside the mind of a troubled kid who um feels unheard you know and feels like people are just sort of um giving him sort of this this sort of blanketed common denominator sort of uh, diagnosis and they're not they're not listening to him no one seems to understand him and it seems like he may know to some degree that he has that something isn't right within him but the solution isn't to put me in an institution. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like he feels he feels unheard in this. And I feel like maybe there's a lot of kids, man, that heard this at the time. This, is, this came out in, what, 1983? That can um, certainly uh, relate to it. You know what I mean? You're, you're trying to do things, and it just doesn't seem to work out the way you want to. It's frustrating because no one can necessarily um, identify with you. And um, you know that you're, you're not crazy. You feel that you're not crazy, but you just, uh, and you don't think being put in an institution is <laughs> going to solve your The right problems. solution for it, right. You know, but, uh, but people are like, nah, forget that. I'm not listening. You're crazy. You need help, right? So I feel like that's, that's what the song is doing, in my opinion. It, it's, it's sort of a struggle between, you know, the person and, and people outside of that person. The person knows kind of what's going on. They feel it, but they can't quite communicate to the people that are maybe in their mom or whoever, you know what I mean, that, that are sort of overseeing them that they don't need to be institutionalized. And uh, yeah, yeah, but it, it sounds terrible. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not going uh, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this one, man. This, this sounds absolutely horrible, uh, mainly in my opinion, because of his approach, um, you know, uh, vocally. You're kind of going through number one, number two, number three, Ryan, and, uh, as, a, as like, as it relates to a conversation. And I think number four to that, I don't know if you got to number four, <laughs> no. would, would be, you're not coherent, you know? So you, gotta, you have to calm down, you know what I mean? And try to, to truly, 
get to a point where you can articulate your thoughts. But just because he's not necessarily coherent and he's kind of all over mm -hmm. the place, it doesn't mean that he's crazy. So I'm just taking it in, trying to yeah. get, the, get trying to get the purpose of it, even though I, I think it sounds um, terrible. So let's uh, let's get back to it. I sit in my room and I just like staring at the wall, thinking about everything. Then again, I was thinking about nothing. And then my mom came in and I didn't even know she was there. She called my name and I didn't hear her. Then she started screaming, Mike, Mike. And I go, what? What's the matter? She goes, what's the matter with you? I go, there's nothing wrong, mom. She goes, don't tell me that. You're on drugs. I go, no, mom, I'm not on drugs. I'm okay. I'm just thinking, you know. Why don't you give me a Pepsi? She goes, no, you're on drugs. I go, mom, I'm okay. I'm just thinking. She goes, no. You're not thinking, you're not just normal people don't act that way. I go, Mom, just give me a Pepsi, please. All I want is a Pepsi. And she wouldn't give it to me. All I wanted was a Pepsi. Just one Pepsi. And she wouldn't give it to me. Just a Pepsi. She went through it with the knees. Not really back to see a thief. Just be happy, just play me. It's a good deal, I'm crazy. Oh, I'm not crazy. Here's the truth. You're the one that's crazy. Here's the truth. You're the one that's crazy. Remember the movie Ghost when he was like, I just want, he's like, the, it was the ghost in the movie Ghost, you know, with uh, Patrick Swayze. Oh, he's like, oh, uh, Pepsi. He, you know, he was like a cigarette. He was like, I, he was like oh, whatever, cigarette. Cigarette. what I wouldn't do for a drag. That's right. So we have a parent here, man. You know, if I'm looking at this part, no, mom, I'm not on drugs. You know, uh, I'm okay. I'm just thinking, you know, why don't you get me a Pepsi? She goes, no, you're on drugs. I go, mom, I'm okay. I'm just thinking. I feel like there's a disconnect. Either he's actually on drugs, you know what I'm saying, or he's not on drugs, but his mom, based off of his behavior, thinks that he's on drugs, and she just doesn't know how to, to deal with it. She doesn't know how to handle someone who is um, maybe suffering from some sort of mental illness. It's only been a handful of punk songs, I think, that I even liked. Punk, punk, punk has been a rough, it's been tough you know, sledding in general. So now it's got the punk elements on top of that with the yelling, you know, and, you know, and it's just stream of just... I was going to say stream of consciousness, but it's not even that. It's just really just a rant. You know, you just, just talk. it's not rhyming. It's not, you know, you just, it, this is just some shit that to me um, should be in a journal and you should be talking to a psychiatrist about. Mm -hmm. That's what they, I, I don't think this is a, a song that I personally, if I was struggling with something like this mentally, I don't think I, I would have uh, made this, but clearly I was the only one that I, I'm wrong about that because this was a very successful song for them. So um, there's other people that can relate to this, but I'm, but I'm glad you made so. you you uh, brought that up though, as far as a psychiatrist, because I feel like that's that's someone that can navigate what's happening here. Clearly, there's there's a disconnect between the boy and his mom, and and obviously, you know, he mentioned in the first verse that he thinks he needs to be inst institutionalized, and I feel like he's it's a cry for help. He's crying out. He's trying to articulate himself, but he's rambling. He's all over the place, and I feel like that's what a therapist does. A therapist kind of slows it down. You know, mm -hmm. sort of systematically yeah. uh, tries to to break down what's happening and can kind of, you know, get to the root of what it is. Right. You know what I mean? That's right. throwing this person off. So I'm glad you said that. This was in 1983, and uh, I know that the 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 knowledge and the sort of the studies regarding mental health. Um, I I just know at this point that there's been a lot more research. It's a good point. A lot more data that has point. gone into understanding mental health. So yep. I can only imagine a parent in good 1983, point. especially coming from where we come from. Good like point. I can't even remember any. I can't even remember the word depression being uttered, even though I know people were depressed. Oh, I know yeah. people were going through it, right? And I and I think that where we come from, I think a lot of times people don't say this. I mean, I think people become more homicidal than suicidal. Where mm. I come from, they just become more violent. They they use their depression. It's manifested in different ways, right? So in 1983, a kid that's that's troubled, that's going through, that has that's struggling with mental health. I can only imagine with just the lack of information that was available at that time how parents mm -hmm. could handle it. Because I think that's what this song is saying to me. Like, this guy is trouble, but no one knows what to do with him. You know what I mean? Or his mom is lost. Like, you're on drugs. The only thing that's doing is adding fuel to the fire and frustrating yep. him even more because you're claiming things. So that, that's kind of what I'm getting out of the song, man. I'm past liking it at this point. It's more about me just understanding it. Understanding it, it yeah. So I just want to understand it. So um, clearly it was voted. It had a lot of votes from you guys for a reason. Clearly at 3 million uh, uh, something views, and this is just on the um, on audio YouTube. version yeah. on YouTube. I'm sure the uh, the video has had uh, a lot more views. There, it, it it moved people for a reason. All right, man, let's finish it on up. All I wanted was a Pepsi, just one Pepsi, and she wouldn't give it to me. Just a Pepsi. She was good with the knees, got me back to see her knees. Just me up, she's just lazy. It's just good, they're all crazy. I'm not crazy. Here's the truth. You're the one that's crazy. Here's the truth. You're trying to be crazy. I'm sitting in my 
my room. My mom and my dad came in. They pulled up the chair and they sat down. They go, Mike, we need to talk to you. And I go, okay, what's the matter? They go, me and your mom, we've noticed lately you've been having a lot of problems. And you've been going off for no reason. And we're afraid you're going to hurt somebody. And we're afraid you're going to hurt yourself. So we decided that it would be in your best interest if we put you somewhere where you can get the help that you need. And I go, wait, what are you talking about? We decided my best interest? How do you know what my best interest is? How can you say what my best interest is? What are you trying to say? I'm crazy. When I went to your school, I went to your churches, I went to your institutional learning facilities. So how can you say I'm crazy? Say you're gonna pick for crazy, leave your suffering in my face. Why don't they pick my head? Better leave me, I'll be dead. I'm not crazy. Interesting, man. That, that to me, I mean, I know Ryan. <laughs> I feel like, oh man, what, Ryan's uh, silence is deafening on this one. <laughs> it looks like towards the end of the song, his parents, or his parent, I'm not sure, you know, was telling him that they were going to put him in an institution. You know, they said it would be in his best interest, and he said, "My best interest." You know what I mean? What do you mean, my best interest? Uh, you know, I went to your uh, schools, I went to your churches, I went to your institutional learning facilities. So how can you say I'm crazy? You know, I mean, to me, you know, the definition of crazy, somebody that's like mentally deranged that it, I would think that type of person couldn't care for themselves or maybe follow directions or follow orders to a degree. And he's saying, I went to your schools. I followed your rules. You know what I'm saying? I was mentally aware mm -hmm. enough to do what you asked me, you know, so I, I don't see how you think that that's in my best interest. You know what I'm saying? How about you ask me what would be in my best interest? You're not listening to me. You're just, um, you don't necessarily know how to deal um, or you're not hearing me, you know what I mean? So you're just, the, the parents are struggling, it seems like, throughout this entire thing to understand the person, to understand the kid. They didn't know how to navigate the situation, so they were just like, when all else fails, just throw him, throw his ass in an institution. And this seems to be his way of lashing out or, or just being frustrated with um, with that is, is how I'm taking the song. You know what I'm saying? Could be wrong, could be more to it. I'm sure there's plenty of people who have dissected this song over years. This is the first listen. And even like this last line, you know, he said, uh, you know, they're trying to fix my head. Mentally, I'll be dead. You know what I'm saying? By the time you think you're helping, right, by putting me in this, this institution, but you're, you're just going to turn me into essentially a, a vegetable, you know, trying to help me, you know, me to alleviate my pain, you know, maybe give me, pump me full of drugs instead of trying to get to the core of what, what it is, you know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to understand me. So, um, you know, that's, that's where I'm taking it, man. That's how I'm taking the song. I don't, I don't, I definitely didn't enjoy that musically, but, um, you know, you know, just get, let me know if I'm on the right track in terms of it, at least understanding it. That's what I'm trying to understand. And like I said, I do think that it spoke to a generation of kids, especially at this time. And I didn't, that felt like no one could hear them or understand them. And it gave, this is, I'm sure spoke to people like, yes, finally someone can understand wh what I'm going through. You know what I mean? Like, and I think this music, the, the sort of chaotic, punk like chaotic uh, parts of the music was sort of cathartic for a lot of kids, man. And it let them get out their frustrations and, and adults, not saying just kids throughout that time. And yeah. maybe that's what this, what, what uh, purpose this song served for people. So not playlist and interesting listen for me. If this was a true story um, and this was the, his, uh, the, the singer's story in life and how he came up, man, it's sad, you know? Um, and I think George, I think you hit it on the head when you said a lot of people could probably identify with this uh, at that time. And like, man, you know, I'm, I'm struggling um, with people understanding me as well. And, you know, and people think I'm crazy, whatever the case may be. So I think um, if that's a true story or if he dedicated this to people that do struggle with um, mental issues or disabilities or whatever the case may be, man, um, I think that that's a beautiful thing that he could that they made this song. I do think that. Seems to be like what the band may be about, Ryan. You know what I mean? The, the, the name of the band is Suicidal Tendencies. Yeah. It seems like that that seems to be what yeah. they, they are their, their essence of what the band is, you mm -hmm. know? And I think that that's something that's very needed, man, you know, for a lot of people to get through um, struggles and trials and tribulations and stuff in their life, man, that may have suicidal thoughts or whatever the case may be, man. So, But musically, I just didn't like the way the song sounds. You know, that's just the bottom line. You know, it's just... Um, 
It's just not for me. But I have to understand it that I don't think it was made for me. It wasn't, this mm-hmm. is not something that, um, that was made for me to identify to, because that's just how I receive music. I got to identify with it in some way, shape or form. I just re- uh, respect the subject matter. And if the band is about, um, you know, suicidal, you know, thoughts and things like that and, and, and helping people work through that, I can respect that. I still um, don't identify with that, but I can respect that. So for me, yeah, bro, that was a that was a rough one, man. That was a rough one. I hope you guys know that that your boy really loves you guys, man. I really try to to embrace the the free thinker mindset and put on that cap, and and sometimes it's easier uh, than others, and sometimes a little bit more difficult than t- than other times. And today was a difficult one. This was work today. That's the interview, man. If you guys enjoyed that, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And also, guys, check out our Patreon channel if you're interested. It will allow you to get exclusive access to our content. The link for that will be in the description. I'm George. That's Ryan. Lost in Vegas. We out.